Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Jama Malmi with another scrapbook process video for the creative design team. All February long, we have a love your stash challenge and this week it's to use a kit. So I created this two page spread and added some bonus photos as well. So stay tuned to see how I incorporate the extra photos into my scrapbook layout. It's actually one of my very favorite tips. So I've taken this calendar kit and I'm going to use the yellow and orange background pages that you now see here to create something totally new using mostly just the products found in the kit. I added a little bit of extra supplies to my stash, but I mostly just stuck to what was in the kit. And since it's created to be a calendar kit, there are 13 one page layouts and that is for the 12 months of the year plus a cover page, but I wanted to create a cohesive two page layout. So that's what I'll be showing you here. And I think that it worked out really nicely. I pulled all of the die cut sheets. So these little pieces will just pop right out really easily as die cuts. And I'm just separating what is supposed to be used on these pages from the kit and setting them to the left side. And then all of the other pieces that are for other pages over to the right. And you can see that heart even already popped out. And then these are stickers and I'm cutting apart the stickers that we'll need for this layout and setting the others aside and the two base pages. So these are what the base pages look like. It's a really lovely kit. It's, a, it's one of our cut above kits and I love that it makes scrapbooking so easy by having all the base pages and parts and pieces and even the design done for you if you wanna copy it exactly. They are really, really pretty as is. So I've got my photos here and I'm sort of just playing around. I really had no idea the direction I was going to go when I started. So you're seeing this whole process kind of unfold with some editing. So you're not sitting here for two hours, but I knew that I needed to tie in the orange and the yellow on both sides. So my first thought was to cut off the wings, so to speak, from that orange background page so that I could have a strip going across both pages. And then I wanted to pull in a kind of a earth toned or neutral color background for behind that. And I really, really liked this wood grain paper. It's from our wood grain paper pack that is in the annual catalog still. And I liked how that was looking. So then I was trying to incorporate the orange on the other side. And my first thought was that I need to cover up the pink because I don't want that pink strip showing in my layout. I have the yellow and orange because this is a pumpkin patch and fall themed layout. And you can see here are the pumpkin pictures. And this is how I am adding those extra bonus pictures. And there's going to be another one on the back too. But I knew that I wanted to have those in that pocket plus page protector. So I just put those in right away to keep them out of my way. And then I thought, well, I need more space on that background where the charcoal printed piece was. So I added some charcoal cardstock and then I apologize. I kind of bounce back and forth here a lot because I'm working on them both at the same time and trying to make them cohesive. So I tried to edit this down to kind of work on one layout at a time, but it does bounce back and forth a little bit. But I, I knew I needed to add that extra charcoal piece to fit the two photos. And then I wanted to add the yellow to the other side. So I chopped off the bottom of the yellow page and then I'm adding more of the wood grain paper along the bottom to make it down to a 12 by 12 and um, tie in the wood grain from the other side. So now I am playing with the stickers that came with the layout and decided that those are gonna go on the left side. I cut down the wood grain paper and just added the little wings to each side of a 12 by 12 white sheet of cardstock. Decided to cover up that pattern in the middle of the orange because it was just too busy. It was too much. I could have cut it out and used it for something else, but honestly, the, the pattern and the orange color just are not typically my thing. So I thought, well, I'll just cover it up, but you could definitely kind of gut it out to save some of that if you'd like. And then I decided to add the strips along the bottom. So I've got the one yellow strip to tie in the yellow from the other page. And then that little ruffly sticker came from the sticker pack. And um, it was supposed to be on the yellow page going across the top. 
and then that leaf paper I have tied in on both sides this larger leaf paper that's behind the four by six is actually meant to go on I think the cover page of the calendar and then the other smaller leaf paper that's on the right side of the page is what's meant to go on that page so I'm lining up these stickers and I take forever and a day Please tell me that you guys do this too, that you fuss with your title and your stickers or even if it's just die cuts or whatever forever just to get it just perfect and tweak it just ever so slightly. You know, in the end, it makes a big difference <laughs> to me for to the perfectionists and the detail-oriented people out there like me. So let me know if you do that too. So now I'm switching back over to the right side and I wanted to incorporate another ruffle. This is actually from a completely different page. I'm not sure which one, but I wanted to tie the ruffle in or the scallop, whatever you want to call it, from the other side onto this side. And so I decided to kind of pull that charcoal background up further and have it lined up just at the top there. That ruffled um, mat came with that yellow background paper so I decided to use that to tie it in as well but I moved it to the bottom position so that it wouldn't be right next to that ruffle across the top. Then I needed to add a strip of cardstock going across so that the two orange strips would match up in the middle and I didn't leave enough space on the left side so I needed to add another piece of paper to enable that and I wanted to do some tone on tone stamping to kind of dress it up and it sort of reminded me of this orange background that looks like it has tone on tone stamping but it's actually the printed paper so I used an old old stamp set with some autumn leaves on it and I thought that that was just the perfect touch so now I'm using my versa mat to line up this bottom portion and I decided to just kind of, I, I made it go past the 12 inch mark and then I'm going to cut the bottom off because I needed to line up the two orange strips perfectly. So I lined up the, perf the orange strips before cutting off that bottom piece so that everything was all lined up nicely. And I just ordered a new Versa mat so that I have two Versa mats to do two page layouts in my video because just having one really made it hard to video this for you all. So um, I'm really excited to get that second Versa mat. That way I know that I've got everything in screen for you. So now I'm going to glue all of my photos down. I'm really liking how this is turning out and like I said I had no idea the direction I was going when this all started. So um, this all just kind of unfolded perfectly and um, lining them up again to make sure that I placed that other orange strip perfectly lined up next to the right page and there we go another thing I wanted to point out is that wood grain paper see how it's going different directions on each layout I didn't think about how to cut it beforehand because I only had one full sheet and then one partial sheet and I wish I would have cut it differently so that I would have them both going the same way. So, you know, it it's not a like make or break it thing. But if you think about it ahead of time, think about which direction your lines are going on your paper so that you can have them oriented the way you want as you're doing your layout. So I pulled out all of those die cut sheets. Um, I decided to use just the flowers from the one layout, which is what was supposed to go on the yellow page, and then spread them out throughout the two pages instead of throughout just one page. And it's cut off over on the left, but you'll see it here in a minute once I put everything together. I, I put it front and center again. I'm adding silver embellishing thread to this little tag. And then I'm going to twist it around because I wanted it to stay in place and twisting it kind of helped, but then it needed a little extra something. So I used just a little dot of glue to keep it right there and that will dry clear and you will never know and you'll never see it and it just stays right where I want it. So I'm going to glue down all of my embellishments now and the die cuts that are spread across the two pages are in a visual triangle. So it was supposed to be a visual triangle on the original layout on just one page, 
but it's just a visual triangle spread throughout the two pages. Some of the die cuts I just glued down flat to the page, and then some of them like this one I put on 3D foam. And I put some glue just like at the base of the leaves so that the edges could kind of flip up a little bit, be a little loose, not not be tacked down tightly and then the flower on the top there is on foam again just put some glue on the bottom portion of that little leaf and i was generous with my 3d foam number one because i have a lot of it from those shaker die cuts and number two i don't want it to flatten over time and be kind of buckled in some places so I found one more photo hidden away of this event and added it to the back of this pocket plus insert. And I'm gonna show you how this comes together. This is just like you would do like a pocket page, but in this case, I only have four pockets. Three of them have photos and then I'm making my own little pocket card with this um, new stamp set that comes out March 1st. I love that little flower and the leaves. I thought that they matched the flowers and leaves in this kit really well. So I first tried to stamp and then color them in with cinnamon ink and I wasn't liking how that was working. So I put the color down first, um, sort of water coloring with a water brush and then I squeezed the ink from the cinnamon ink pad into the lid of the ink pad, picked it up with the water brush and colored it on it looked really horrible at first and I thought, oh my gosh, this isn't going to work. But once you stamp over it, it really looked nice. I thought it gave it the definition it needed and always with watercoloring, it looks better once it's dry. So there's how that little card turned out. I used a scrap of that leaf paper to tie it all in um, and I think that it turned out nice. All scraps. I used scrap wood, scrap of the wood paper, scraps of the stamped leaf paper and added the few stamped images. So here's how that all comes together. I'm gonna add just another leaf and flower on the front to embellish the front. And then that little pocket plus insert just goes right in your scrapbook between the two page spread. And it just, it, you know, it's not a full page, so it you still see the beautiful spread in your layout and it doesn't obstruct anything. And it's a really great way to add some extra photos to your layout that don't necessarily fit into the design of your layout. They come in portrait and landscape four by six and also portrait and landscape three by four size. So there's four different versions of those inserts. After I used the clear shimmer brush on the flowers around the layout, I used that same shimmer brush to pick up some charcoal ink and splatter it around the layout. Just a little bit of splatter, just to add a little something. I would have typically added my charcoal shimmer brush, but I was actually at a retreat, but I didn't bring it with me. So this was the next best thing and it still added some lovely shine, just a little bit of a lighter charcoal color. So here's a look at the finished layout with that insert. And I'm gonna bring in what the original layouts were supposed to look like so you can compare them again. So you can see this really was transformed into a very different look, but I had all of the elements I needed to really make this two page layout shine. And speaking of shine, can you see that shimmer brush, the little splatters, it's really hard to pick it up on camera. I don't think you can see it on the flowers, but you can see those little splatters. And it just adds just a nice little touch. The shimmer brush, especially the clear shimmer brush, and also the black, I use the black a lot, are my favorite tools in my craft room. So I'm gonna leave you with some close-up shots, and I thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this, I hope you'll like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And please be sure to check out the rest of the creative design team. I am going to link all of their channels down below in the description because we are posting videos every single day this month and you don't want to miss any of their videos as well. This week it's all using kits. And at the end of this video right here, I've got the playlist of all of the videos starting from day one so you can watch from the beginning if you want or catch up on anything you missed. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.